In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about our life experiences. And this evening, while I was finishing up a cup of marvelous ramen and taking care of some raspy throat issues, as any old person does, and my own late mother used to drink ginger tea all the time to care for that, that she learned from her friends, that in life we have to talk about truth. A Korean boy of a rotund size, claiming to be a 10-year student at the university, came up to play with me. He alleged that he was an American citizen, but then he told me a marvelous tale about how he was actually about to become an American citizen. He's about to work for six, Saks Fifth Avenue in some sort of financial role, and he is a political science and economist major. So I'm sitting there listening to him, but then he's also trying to tell me that he spent 10 years of his life in Korea, 10 years of his life in Japan, and he made it to high school by the helping hand of a grandfather. He showed his absolute hatred of his actual biological father, and he decided that he might just do something kind and loving for his mother, who he acknowledged was an arranged marriage to his father. I couldn't get over the crassness of this child. I also couldn't get over the marvelousness in which he was trying to test my Japanese as he is a four-year student in this university, allegedly in Japanese, and supposedly has a Japanese girlfriend. How marvelous for him. According to him, she's going home in a couple of years, and that's going to be good for him because Japanese do tend to play right and go home. They don't try to ruin life for people here. They usually prefer to go home because there is no place like home in Japan. There's a part of the world that is untouched and pristine and marvelous there. I have admitted on occasion that I often miss my life there, but as a young man I could not produce a higher level of living, and as a man who had fallen in love with a Japanese girl, I couldn't produce the life we needed for her or our son. In life we have moments of time to speak the truth. I played by the rules, I did everything correctly, and openly there's always someone who wants to play as if I don't have the right to live my life beyond that time. It was a long time ago. I don't remember all the things I had to do, all the papers I had to fill out, or all the constructive things I had to do to ensure, with the help of family help, that I would be able to provide and help someone to do something. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth. And as a Catholic person, not at all, but as someone who has a Catholic friend, I'm really appalled. I can't get over the arrogance of these young people. That this boy walked up and said, hello, mister, and started to solicit from the get-go. That's not usually how the good kids who want to help me do things. They usually are sweet and innocent in their soul. They walk up and they genuinely want to help me and they simply will take the time to talk with me a little bit before they have to run off. But the marvelous Catholic lie is I'm going on a trip to Japan or I'm leaving next month or I'm done in school or there's something else somewhat cruel. Now I can make all the rhymes all the time that I want to but when people ask me to talk about topics that God doesn't want me to, I don't talk about them. When I am under the presumption that something is confidential based on the type of nature of the talk, I pretty much keep that to myself. But if I'm illustrating a story and wanting to cherish someone who I'd like to give some love and glory, I might actually use their name. But I'm not trying to embarrass them, I'm not trying to harm them, and openly I don't give their full name so nobody knows who they are anyway. But what I find marvelous is how many assholes are in the retail world and they hire asshole people to work for them. What ends up happening is they lose the good students, the good workers, the quality employees. And then it just means that they have a production shop. Well, congratulations. But a production shop is great when business is good. But when business is not good, it's the relationships in a shop and the relationships with your customers and clients who eat there regularly by young people and seasoned mature people that change the world. You see, we can serve food on a platter, we can serve food in a paper, we can serve, serve food in a lot of ways. But how we serve food and how we prove that we've done everything right is totally different today. People have not lessened their customer service standards, although men and women of affluence might. If they're accustomed to, re to eating in really posh restaurants, they're not going to expect a hell of a lot out of McDonald's employee. 
But when you go into McDonald's and you meet a superior female black employee, you want to compliment her. But if they don't have an a identification tag on, a name tag on, then you can't compliment them, can you? And there are people that don't want to give out their names, and that's okay, but they could put out a number on their shirt, like the bartenders do here, which I really can't believe. I can't believe that people are afraid to give their names, but I don't know what kind of shitbags you have in this community. What I know is that somebody who was literally a police officer or sheriff tried to play up to me and offer me pot tonight, and the answer was no. Why we have a pot shot on a college campus is sort of a surprise. We already have four alcohol shops. Why do we need a pot shop too? Are we really trying to help students get through school? Or are we trying to derelict, be derelict in our duty about what is real in life and what's not real? Are we trying to send young professional business people off into their world and to their companies in the future being totally addicted to something? It's one thing if it was medicinal. It's one thing if it was really proven to help something. But the value of it is that we have to be willing to have people and employees and security guards that will talk honestly about the laws to all people. I had a security guard, a very fat ass obvious sheriff or wannabe, try to play me with telling me that nobody could smoke that outdoor and I'm like, then what the hell are we selling it for? What I couldn't tell was whether or not the product they were carrying was legal or not. I realize laws are changing about different types of medicines and different types of old ways of doing things. But I also know that we can be abused by people who just want to say things and play things. And it's hard for me to listen to hear that one of the bars on campus doesn't actually serve food, allegedly. I simply asked one day when I wanted to eat something different, do you have any bar food there? And he said no. And I thought, well, isn't that marvelous? We have young people drinking their asses off who are not mature enough to take food with them or to go for dinner before they go. Now we're starting their drinking at 12 in the afternoon on a weekend for some little show. I've also seen marvelous groups of boys running down the street trying to do something, but then the other day, here's what I saw. I saw hundreds of boys in clown costumes going down to allegedly support a GBLT event. And they were wearing multicolored wigs. What marvelous bastard thought that was appropriate today? The truth is that topic is not something that we should be talking about at all. Who a person loves and how they choose to love and where they choose to love is a private conversation between, well, the people who love each other. It is not a public topic. It is not appropriate. Because the Lord God made all people. He made all predilections and all choices, as people like to call it. But the bottom line is, he's not asking you to talk about your sex life in the public sector. And we have sort of still, thankfully, some modesty rules and ordinances on, well, the books in most communities across the land that say that we don't display our genitalia out in front of us when we walk into anywhere at all. But there are marvelous bastards in the community that feel that medical rights don't matter to me or to you. They think they have the right to know everything about you without ever earning the trust from you. What I see is a ping game going on. From, on a person's life. And when a homeless person has a ping game going on them, it's really exhausting for them. Because they're just trying to live life, do their life the best they can, get out of the trouble that they've gotten into financially. And what you're doing is playing a shitbag game because you got nothing else to do. But here's the marvelous problem. You're doing it on your employer's clock. You're doing it as an employee or a subcontractor to someone during the 9 to 5 which makes them fully liable for your illegal or immoral or ill-willed behavior.